I always love the YouTube delay where you're like, are we live? Are we not? What's going Yay! on? Maybe hit the live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are live. Okay. Hooray. We I made it. <laughs> There's always the delay where you're like, I don't know what's going on in YouTube land. Are you going to let us go on or not? Um, right. <laughs> it's so exciting. The number jumped up. As we were getting ready and situated, there was like five people waiting. Now all of a sudden there are 19 cozy mystery readers with us. That's so cool. Oh, that's terrific. That might be a record. That's a lot. I was like, this is amazing. You guys are here ready to go talk about cozies. This is Oh my so cool. gosh. And we have someone who's new to cozy mysteries. That's so exciting. Alexis, Lady Gizmo, Wendy, Victoria. Oh my gosh, I'm like the entire Cozy Crew is here. And I saw you said that, Victoria. I'm like, I'm totally using that Cozy Crew. That sounds really cool, like Cozy Companions. I'm like, Cozy Crew sounds like we're like legit a team or something. <laughs> we are, we have to support one another. Could not everybody understands Cozies. When I show them what I'm reading, they're like, mm, you know, you gotta have some fun. I think there's something about the covers. They're like, oh, is that for kids? You're like, no, this cover is really colorful and cute and fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm an elementary school librarian. So, you know, it's natural that they'll think, hey, this is a kid's book she's reading. But then I'm like, ah, oh, no, this is murder. So, you know, <laughs> I got to do not serious. I got to do serious stuff during the evenings because yep. I do the fun stuff during the day. <laughs> It's so funny. I was talking about Cozy Mysteries again the other day because it's what, obviously what I do every day because I love them. And I was like, no, they're they're murders, but they're fun murder. Yeah. <laughs> so when you said that, you just reminded me and I was like, no, they're fun though. Like someone dies, but it's okay. <laughs> exactly. Then it's nice murder. <laughs> they're fun murders. It just sounds so wrong saying that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was like, there's so many people here. I was going to say, I was doing my shout outs and I lost track because I got so excited with everybody. KL, Christine, Victoria. Oh my gosh, Vaughn. I'm like, you guys are so cool. All the comments just keep coming and it's hard to keep track. Summer, Alexis, Wendy, you guys are amazing. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. And Renee is another first time cozy mystery reader. That's super. Welcome to the Cozy Mystery Book Club. <laughs> I have to show everyone. Do, 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 do. It's so cute. She just showed me that. It's a great I shirt. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Oh my goodness. And my old school logo mug. Yes. That just makes me so happy. That's so <laughs> funny. I was so happy to. Oh. I, I had the best time designing all the stuff because, you know, I, I love the idea of. You know, being it's a club, and you. I always feel like you need to have something to be like, yeah, I'm a part of the club. Like, I have my shirt, I have my mug. Like, you have, like, you want that mentality of just having something. So I didn't turn it into a business or anything. And like, I think because Zazzle lets you set your own prices, so I literally had to do like a penny, and then profit off of it because I just really want you guys to like have fun with it. Like, I have my own little like thermos here tonight from hey. some so I'm just you just make me so happy. And there's stuff on the back, too. So when <laughs> Kale gets her sweatshirt, it's, like, amazing. People know you're part of the Cozy Mystery Club, whether you're coming or going. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you just made me so happy. I, I love this woman. She's just the sweetest human being. Like, you literally just you just want to hug her. And I'm like, virtual <laughs> hug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Victoria, I can totally eat some cheesecake. When I I go to the bookstore every Sunday. Oh, Angela, you have cheesecake? Yes. So I oh. literally like purchased it for today. I, and it even has like this little blue drizzle and I didn't want to put it on until like the live stream mm. started. And then apparently because I'm that person and the dog also, I bought, the, this is so, this is going to sound really ridiculous, but my dog loves whipped cream. So I bought oh. this for him. <laughs> nice. Oh, is that like, I'm ready coconut milk whipped cream yes and he loves Ooh. it again this is where i'm at with my dog like i'm literally buying him the type of whipped cream he likes well you know you know you're gonna end up sharing anyways so i was like the thing is too like if you guys really want to see the puppy okay i don't want to be weird he'll pop his little head up if he wants the whipped cream <laughs> he'll say hi for whipped cream he'd, he'd do anything for whipped cream i know virtual hugging only <laughs> I know. It's so sad. Even the little kids at school, it's like, hey, air hug. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, there he is. Hi, Max. Yeah, he's like, wait a second. There's whipped cream now. I'm here for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although, just- you know, this cheesecake, I think that it could be made better with some whipped cream on top. They do have a lot of chocolate curls, but I think whipped cream would put it over the top. So Minus the blood. <laughs> Can we just talk about how many cheesecakes they had to make in this book? Yeah, what was it at the end? Like 15 or something? I lost count. It was 28 cheesecakes. By oh the my end of the gosh. Book. So again, like obviously our book for tonight is Death by Cherry Chocolate Cheesecake. And the entire book, they're baking cheesecakes. The entire Ellie book. is baking cheesecakes. Ellie's like a baking queen. I was like thinking about Jake. I'm like, Jake. I don't know about Jake as a baker. I don't think she baked a single thing in this book. I think Ellie did all of it. I was a little disappointed. You know, Ellie sometimes was like, it's okay, Jake, go investigate, figure out what's going on, save me from going to jail. You know, I understand, but. Can we we also acknowledge the fact that like she, I, I, I got the biggest kick out of this. Like every time Ellie made something, she, uh, Jacobia, or however you want to say her name, she ate it. She was like, yeah, yeah I'm going to eat, eat the cupcake. And at one point, she had two muffins. Not one, yeah. she had two. <laughs> and and she's, she's like, oh, I better stop. <laughs> oh, my God, you got nothing else to sell. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Victoria, all made by hand. That's a lot to make from scratch. Even getting, you know, their chocolate from Marla, they're really going above and beyond. I would just go get some Nestle Toll House chocolate chips and melt it down and be done with it. Or like they were even making these little camp. I don't know how hard that is. I've never made those, but can you buy chocolate swirls like that? I mean, I have so many questions about this too, because they, they, they found a murdered man in the bakery. You'd think they'd be okay with like, no, you can make us some chocolate cake. We're okay with like a substitution. No. Exactly. Because he he was over the pot of chocolate. I think if I were the Coast Guard, I would be like, no, I don't want some murder guy, you know, it being part of my cheesecake. I I know they talked about it in here about how he was set up like against the pot and everything. And they're like, could they have been strong enough to get him up there? So, ooh. Um, yeah, I was thinking too, Alexis brought up or not cook in the bakery. I mean, they did go to her house and cook for a while, but remember a couple months ago, I think it was a salted caramel. They by Amanda Flowers, they totally shut down their shop. And I don't know, Sheriff Bob seems like he's a little bit lazy. I think he probably should have shut them down too. I was wondering about that because the entire book, they're talking about how, um, so she has her, I, I felt badly for this character because she's like, oh, she's my stepmother slash housekeeper. I'm like, just say stepmother. Yeah. Um, but she's with the housekeeper for her, you know, for the home, but she'd also clean up the store. But she never actually went into the store to clean in between the murder and them cooking. No. So, who did? <laughs> Ellie. I, I noticed that one very quickly because they're always talking about how clean she wants everything and how she's always cleaning, but she didn't actually clean after the murder. That's very true. So the other thing I had a question about was on the back of the book, it says that Matt Muldoon is the health inspector. But when I was reading the book, I didn't take away from it that he was the health inspector. I thought he was just like a neat freak who wanted to prove that they were messy so that his wife could have the bakery instead. And I looked back at it because I'm like, maybe I missed something. And I see where he's saying he'll tell his friends at the health department. But I never really see actually in the text that he's the health inspector unless I totally missed it. So I thought that was an interesting description on the back versus the contents. I was trying to look down. I um, I don't know where, where, you saw, where was that? You said on the back? Yeah, on the back it says he's the health inspector found murdered in the kitchen of the chocolate mousse. He he was like the self-appointed. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Work. I mean, I also love how like everybody didn't like this man. I mean, we won't get into like spoilers super, super quickly, but I, I thought it was 
very interesting how many people are like, no, nah, he's a terrible person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone, they're just blaming Ellie. She was the go-to. Poor Ellie. Yeah. And the gossip started spreading so quickly. It was like Jacoby had Jake didn't even know who the murderer, murder victim was. And she goes home and her mother-in-law's like, oh yeah, it was Matt Muldoon. <laughs> Nobody liked him. <laughs> It, it, it got to her first. I just saw that Wendy said she's wearing her cozy hoodie. I was like, that's amazing. Yay. <laughs> I just, the the way the comments come up versus StreamYard and YouTube, I just saw that. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. She t posted a picture on her Instagram and it was, you guys make my heart so happy. Oh, so that's cool. super. I'll have to check it out. I live in Florida, so I didn't think the sweatshirt would be a good choice for me. So I went with the t-shirt. We got and a layer here. It doesn't get cold. I feel I feel as if you're more decked out than I am right now. I should put on my my shirt. I was trying to you know I was trying to dress up and I I didn't think of doing that earlier. I had on my just cozy pullover, but I got too hot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Victoria, I'm glad you agree with me that he really wasn't the health inspector. And yeah, they do bring in the real health inspector towards the end of the novel, and he checks everything over and says it's okay. I agree. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they made a mistake. Town. He was just the random town jerk. <laughs> yeah. He's like the guy who dresses up like the health inspector with the name tag, but he's really not the official guy. I mean, he kept complaining about stuff that, I mean, the complaints were ridiculous. They were just totally unfounded. They weren't dog even- Dog hair. Yeah. Because <laughs> at that point, she also didn't even own a dog. Neither of them did. But he's complaining about dog hair. Yeah. Okay. And since we're bringing up dogs, did you feel that Jake loved dogs more than people like Marla? Dog. Who did she sit with? She I... sat with the dog. And Marla's like, I just pictured her like struggling up at the top of the stairs. And Jake is sitting with the dog. <laughs> I feel like, she, you know, like I feel as if she broke one of the cardinal, like, the rules of cozies. You don't hurt the animal. <laughs> you yeah. don't injure the dog. You, you don't injure the dog. I, as I'm reading that, I'm like, this dog better not die. I was, like, really mad at that point. <laughs> so you better not kill that dog. I was I was more worried. I mean, we find out about Marla, but, like, I was more worried about the dog. It's like, how can you do this? Because she's talking about how her dog wouldn't even get up. He's just lying there. Yeah. Him. My heart, that was so sad. I think this is the first cozy where I've ever had an animal get hurt. You I, again, I've I've read books when it when the animal is involved, where the person is on the ground and the animal's hovering or looking over, like, oh my master, what happened to me? Right. You're on the blood. I've seen that in cozies, but the animal themselves is never the one injured because it's a cozy yeah. mystery. <laughs> yeah. It's a happy, happy murder. Hurting animals, not happy. It, well, now that we're talking about this, again, the other dog got sh got shot with the, it had like the little BB type gun bullets yeah. in it. Yeah. And <laughs> he seemed, she was worried that he was whipping the dog. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, that dog, it turned out, um, it had run away or was a runaway dog. And, you know, he ended yeah. up with a nice person. But again, I was so worried about the animals in this book. I feel as if I shouldn't have to worry about the cozy animals. They should just be a given for like, they're okay. <laughs> yeah. Two dogs hurt in one cozy. There was a multitude of different storylines going on in this book. Really, if you think you've got the dogs, you've got the murder, you've got the chocolate, you've got the Coast Guard cheesecakes, you've got the sun, you've got the dad. Uh, there was a lot in there. There was a lot. I, I love was a lot. Comment. I just saw Crystal's. I love how even though she's a suspect for murder, they still wanted the cheesecakes made by her <laughs> even though they're afraid yeah. to poison everybody. It's like, yeah, no, you still make those cheesecakes. <laughs> exactly. What if she hid pastry needles inside the cheesecakes for the whole town? I just, that's true though. She is a murder suspect. And they're like, no, you still bake for us. Yeah. Uh, that, I, maybe, that's maybe that's why the sheriff didn't end up arresting her because he knew that, well, number one, I know they have a prior relationship, but um, he knew that the town really needed those cheesecakes. I'll tweet them. Yes. 
they the because they just kept asking for more. First they wanted the fireworks, and then the kids were gonna be on the boat watching the fireworks. They yeah. Just kept and then they wanted the, to roll over the money to next year's fireworks. Apparently these fireworks are really important and involved and related to cheesecakes. They correlate somehow. Cheesecake yeah, is fireworks. I don't think I've ever had cheesecake on the 4th of July. And, you know, if it is, it was a 4th of July cheesecake. So they should have had cheesecake, cherries, chocolate's good, and blueberries, right? So it would be red, oh, right? Mm-hmm. You just reminded me, I'm trying to remember which season of the Great British Baking Show where um, one of the contestants, I love how I remember his name. Like, this is how many times I've seen this show. His name was Andrew, and he baked five cakes, and they each had the flag. Like, one of them had the, you know, the flag. It was the UK, and he had the flag. And I'm thinking, yeah, they could have done that because I've seen it done before. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Alexis said she would love this 4th of July because it sounds like a small town and she would really like to attend it. Yeah, it reminded me when I was um, a teenager, I lived in a small town and my dad had a boat. So one year for the 4th of July, we um, it's, there's a really big lake um, in Central Florida. There's lots of lakes. So we took the, the boat out onto the lake and watched the fireworks. It was fun, but it was really scary because, you know, they shoot them out of the wall, out over the water for a reason, you know, because the fire falls down on you. And then when it was all over, there were so many boats out there that the wake and the waves to get back in was not fun but it was <laughs> yeah i do it was a beautiful fireworks display but those two things are kind of things that you don't think about i mean i'm gonna give them credit because i was i also found this utterly hysterical once i realized so the night before when they really needed the the chocolate for their cheesecakes they took the boat because they thought it would be faster and on the way back they ended up with the fog and waiting for two hours and then the next yeah. time they drove in and it took her an hour to get there so the whole boat idea of being faster was not true. <laughs> no. And Hannah's, I kept comparing to Hannah Swenson since we just kind of read that recently. And Hannah and all the other bakery books I've read, they get up at like three o'clock in the morning and get to the bakery and bake. And I felt like Jake was kind of more like just strolling in, <laughs> you know, whenever. Ellie seemed to be more of a night owl baker than an early riser baker to me. No, it was so funny because the other one, I felt as if she reminded me of, Ellie was the one actually making stuff and she's like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shave some chocolate to put on the top, like the easy jobs. Like she's there yeah. to help. Like I felt like she was the assistant almost. Exactly, yeah, me too. She was the assistant and the taster, <laughs> taste tester. Oh, definitely the taste tester. That that should have been on her business card for this. Yes. I mean, honestly, when she ever said that something was missing from the display because she had it, I'm just going, oh, my goodness. Like, how are you making a profit? Yeah, I don't know. And they had a lot of other goodies going on at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. it definitely seemed like Ellie was a, a stress baker because they had all these different goodies that were beyond cheesecakes that people were coming in to get. So that's a lot of baking. I couldn't tell how many days this story took place over. What do you think? Like a week? I thought it was like three or four days. Yeah, it seemed pretty fast. I mean, I'm just going to go back to your point about her baking because she said, oh, in between the 12 minutes it took to bake, I think cookies. She also was taking her cat nap. So she would do the cookies, cat nap. Yeah. That woman was, you know, she was a force of nature. She, yeah. yeah. I saw someone say, Ellie, yeah, there isn't anything she can't do. That woman was cooking. She was driving the boat. She was the one, you know, she was helping with the slew thing. She was my go getter. I, yeah. I think <laughs> this book could have been a dual perspective and I would have been really okay with that. Exactly. Alexis and Victoria said it was a major lack of sleep time, most definitely. I mean, I'm kind of glad that she would say, oh, I'm having my coffee. Oh, I'm having like the soda for the sugar. Because otherwise, I would not have believed that they were still awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Ellie forces Jake at one time to go take a nap, doesn't she? When they're kind of like, well, yeah. you need a nap. Well, you need a nap, you know? I love that because she she's still standing there wanting to bake because that's what yeah. she does. So she's like, no, you go, you go away. I don't need you. 
Yeah. It, my husband put me in nap jail last weekend. I guess I was being grumpy. <laughs> he said, you're going to nap jail. <laughs> you need to go lay down. I'm like, okay. It was a nice jail. I needed it. I mean, after a certain point, you have to wonder, like, if they just collapsed out of exhaustion after the 28 cheesecake sale. <laughs> like, I bet. Done. Need time off. If they had 28 this year, how many are they going to expect next year? They'll probably want to outdo themselves. The Coast Guard, I mean. I just saw the comment pop up. She was looking at the shawl next door as she did the baking. That's true. Go there and like window shop on your way in. Exactly. It sounded like Miss Halligan had a lot of really nice things in her shop. Um, I... I was, I'm a knitter, so I was really interested. I wanted more details about this gray cashmere wrap. I was wondering if it had beads or like jewels or gemstones built into the shawl, or was it just something really soft that caught Jake's eye? I mean, I thought it was really cute at the end that she gave it to her just for free. Yeah, that I was thought, sweet. I was she start. must have really been looking at it for Miss Halligan to notice that she liked it so much. I mean, I gotta give I gotta give her credit though, because she did sort of reiterate the things that ended up being important, like the shawl or you know, the scratches on the door. I did see um Crystal's comment, because this was one of my questions. Um, and I said I saw someone said that they donated the cheesecakes, which I fully believe. But my secondary question is, did they ever intend to pay Marla for the for the chocolate that they took. I mean, if they donated their service. Not now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't they, need it now. I was curious about that. They never they never actually discussed paying Marla for the chocolate because then they would just go in and take it at one point, um, which led to the whole, you know, sleuthing issues. But I thought it was so funny because I was wondering the same thing of like, are they paying her? Is she donating this too? How does this work? Yeah. So, I think everything was just donated, question mark. <laughs> it seemed like it. And I mean, Marla went above and beyond. She went out after business hours. She went out in that storm and met them at the Salty Dog, I think, to give them more chocolate. And I mean, do we, I'm like, do we get into the spoilers with this because we're talking about her? I mean, I didn't really expect her to be the bad guy or one of the bad guys because she did go above and beyond. And she's like, yeah, I bought yeah. You take some time off, relax. I mean, then you go back and look at that scene going, oh, did you want to get them drunk? So they went, <laughs> like, well, where are you going with this? <laughs> I like KL, pay her with her own bricks of cash. <laughs> yeah. Where are you, Come on. He wants more whipped cream. I know, right? He's gonna growl. <laughs> uh oh. He want this is the whole I want you to pay attention to me, mommy. You're talking mm -hmm. to someone else who's not me. <laughs> so like he wants my attention just to know that like he has the attention, but he doesn't actually want it. Like he's a two Max, you gotta read the book to participate. But you're so cute, we'll let you. And see the thing is now that he's got the attention, he's gonna jump down again. It, it's a it's a being kind of like a first for cozy mysteries. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever read a cozy mystery with so many guilty parties. It was a record number. So, cause yeah, I felt as if she was messing with me after a certain point because I didn't want to mess up the name. It was Sarah Bell. It, was, it wasn't Sarah yeah. Bell. Sarah Bell. Yeah, Sarah Bell. So we meet her and she kind of comes across as just kind of that stereotypical mean girl. And I'm thinking, yeah. oh, okay, you're on my suspect list. And then they have the conversation when she goes to the house, kind of confronts her and she's mm -hmm. the husband's infidelities. And apparently she looked like she was crying. And I sort of wrote her off after that. And then we come back around and she's a crazy person. <laughs> Yeah, when I first, when she was first in the book and she talked, said, oh, you know, your husband was murdered. It was like she wasn't even sad about it. And I didn't know about, you know, his other affairs that he had had at the time. I'm like, well, man, she really didn't like him. Maybe she's the one that did it. Well, even at the beginning, when she went back to the store and accused Ellie of being the murderer, which mm -hmm. again, was like, oh, we're trying to throw, you know, looking back, oh, she's trying to throw off like suspicion. There was the throwaway line of saying how she didn't think she wanted to be alone. Like she just wanted company, even if it was just a weird form of company. So again, I, I saw that line and it kind of stuck with me and I'm going, oh, okay, maybe I can just write her off. But no, 
by the end of the book, she's completely just batty. <laughs> yeah, she was insane. No wonder Matt was looking for other people. Who knows how she treated him? I mean, I still, we never actually, maybe I missed this, but we never actually got the backstory of why they were married because they both seemed to hate each other. <laughs> yeah, they really did. I felt like that was one thing that um, kind of, was a little hard for me in this book was backstory in a lot of places. Um, and I know I had messaged you early on at the beginning of the month. I'm like, oh, how, did you notice? Like this is more of like a spinoff series because it, um, like they, she, I didn't even know what Jake looked like until about halfway through the book when yep. she finally described herself as having a long face and dark hair because this um, comes from the Home Repair is Homicide series, which was written for almost 20 years. I mean, 1997 was a long time ago. My son goes, oh, you know, back in the 19s. I'm like, oh, yeah, back way back in the 19s, right? Like so with floppy disks and, <laughs> and all those things. Right. Exactly. So that made this book a little hard for me to connect to the characters because I felt like an outsider. The author was like, oh, well, you know about why I moved to Maine and you know. And I'm like, well, actually, no, I, I don't know. I haven't read that other series and i also wondered and maybe it's explained in the other series uh why her father is in maine because it doesn't seem like this is her original hometown so i wonder how he came there and how he hooked up you know with his now wife and they said something too about her mom and previous murders so i felt kind of left out that. of the loop I wrote that down because I really wanted this the story because I, I'm trying to fit. Yes, here it is. So at one point, she originally thought that her father killed her mother because yeah. when, she three, when she was three years old, the mother died. And she thought the father was the killer. And they were estranged for a while. And so she was reuniting with him. And she actually says, that's a story for another time. And I'm exactly like, no, that's a story for now. You yeah. thought your father killed your mother? You can't just, that's not a throwaway line. Exactly. Why bring that up and then not give us any details, but yet go into lots of details about all these other things. So yeah, Renee, as a first cozy, I, um, I rated this on Goodreads not very well, I have to say. Yeah, I think I gave it two stars. I feel that it's a below average cozy read for me, at least. So, yeah, and definitely, Wendy, not the best, best introduction to cozies. I mean, I so I think that the issue for some people with this, I, I've given us a lot of thought. So this is my perspective, and I think it's kind of twofold, is the fact that it's, it's almost as if, to me, the example would be, you know, you're putting your kid to bed and the parent's like, I'm going to tell you a story. And instead of reading a book, they're going to just tell you from memory. And I kind of got that impression. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story. And so I think that played into it. And then I also think the fact that there was a lot of details. And so if you like details, yes. like it's a great thing for you. But if you just want to like skip forward to the action and you're like, I don't need to know about the like this boat and I don't need to know this or that. And you're not a detail reader. That's probably also going to take away. So I just think it's like depends on what you're looking for as a reader. Like if you want to be told a story like this is your book, <laughs> if oh, you want yeah. to you know, it's just different. So again, like I, I understand why some people might rate it lower, but I also think I understand why exactly people love it too with the five star rating. It's just depending on you as what you look for, I guess. That's yeah. why. <laughs> I'm more of a big picture person. Get to the point. <laughs> I don't need all these details. Oh, details. What did you think about the shower scene with the husband. What? That's not cozy mystery. That was pretty racy. When they, so the husband was like, you know, she, he says, I need a shower. And she's like, I do too. He's like, well, why waste water? <laughs> I mean, fade to black, but still, I, it was just, that was an interesting throwaway line in a cozy mystery. That's not it very sure. It sure was. <laughs> I did not expect that at all. Especially because when the husband first came back from his boat, when mm -hmm. he almost ran them over, she didn't even see him right away. You know, he like went to sleep or took a nap or 
I don't know. She was off doing something else when he was first home. And then I'm like, okay, well, maybe, you know, they're not all that close, even though it seems like they were kind of recently married. Um, but yeah, I was wrong. I mean, I also thought it was hysterical when she wanted to lie to him about the fact that, oh, we were out on the boat during, you know, the fog and yeah. the entire time. Like she, I mean, he he was just letting her do her own thing. When she came clean to him, he's like, I know. I mean, but he was just going to let her do whatever she wanted to do. I mean, he was so low key. Even when he had the accident, he's like, are you okay? Are you stressed out? Like, you're the one whose car just apparently flipped in the air. <laughs> oh, I know. That was crazy. And I, I, if someone were chasing me down a mountainside or wherever it was in the middle of the night, almost hitting raccoons, I would be on my cell phone with 911 saying, you need to come get this crazy person behind me because rather they just like pulled off onto a side road and hid. That was the scariest moment where I felt they need, they need Bob. They need Sheriff Bob and crew more than just him because he didn't do very much. He was, uh, he was just going, you know, I'm here. This is my yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. He would walk kinda. away out of scene. And you're like, come back. Aren't you going to yeah. do some detective work? Exactly. Yeah. He's like the old West Sheriff, you know, yeah. with, the, with the mustache and just kind of moseying along. I mean, as, yeah, I was looking down and because it said that they introduced him to his wife. So they've, mm -hmm. been, they've been family friends for a long time. So he knew that. Ellie wasn't the killer, or at least he was just believing that. And so I kept wondering, like, when you walk out of scene, where do you go to investigate? I wanted to know what, yeah. he was, you know, off the page, because we never actually learned that because they solve the mystery. I'm like, who are you investigating in the meantime, though? Maybe he's like um, Hamish Macbeth on Acorn TV, where he's just kind of chill <laughs> and everybody else solves the crime. <laughs> I mean, Maybe this like maybe this is just the town too because one of my other questions has to do with the father going back to him. He was dressed in his hospital gown with the hospital slippers, with the IV line still, you know, right. out, and he took a cab home. What cab company took him home? First of all, because that's a liability. But how did he get yeah. out? <laughs> There was a lot of hospital escaping too because yeah. remember they broke Marla out of the hospital. Also, probably the same one. I mean, maybe that they were, maybe the hospital staff were having a cup of coffee with, you know, Bob over there just relaxing. I mean, these people were very low key, like, no, if you want to leave, it's okay. You just had a heart attack. It's no big deal. Yeah, I was really surprised. I mean, I'm glad he's doing good. I'm glad he had Marla's dog to keep him company. <laughs> I was glad that the dog ended up with him. I'm going, oh, the dog. I, are we going to actually talk about this? Because she, Jake came to the conclusion that Marla hurt her own dog. This yeah. Is the conclusion she reached. I how, was, how would she hurt her own dog? I was so upset, but I'm going, you stay with this family. Like, you know, you're going to stay with him because the, the father is taking her, you know, the dog out for a walk. Yeah. You know, like really cherishing this dog. I'm like, you found the right family. You just stay with him. Yeah. <laughs> I was shocked when I read that part. At first I was miffed that, Jake seemed to care about dogs more than humans. But then once I found out that Marla did that to her dog, I'm like, well. Hmm. Oh, this, oh, this is a good point. Victoria mentioned the storm was preoccupying the police. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I'll give you that one. I don't know. Being in Florida, how bad is a hurricane in Maine? <laughs> I don't know. That's true. That's true. I mean, I guess the murdered victim. I guess I guess it wasn't the main priority, but I mean that's if he wants to do the to do list and organize how he wants, it's up to him. Um, right. I, I like the comment like, "How did no one from the hospital go find the dad?" Because again, liability issues. <laughs> just putting that out there, you don't just kind of let a heart attack patient walk out in their hospital gown. He didn't even try and sneak out in regular clothing. Yeah. Um, how did he get past security? I wanted to know. I needed. Again, she gives us a lot of details. I'm like, I want that one. <laughs> yeah, she gives you details about things you didn't need to know and seemingly unnecessary information. Um, Alexis brings up, you know, the point of, and I agree, I, I was like, what? With the son when he finally arrives, you know, and he's like, this is my wife. 
Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, good for him. And and then they're like, well, we're going to have another gift for you in six months. And then you learn more about this child. And, and then um, Jake just keeps dwelling on, he got married, he got married, he got married over and over. And I'm like, okay, but she's also pregnant. So, and did she ever discuss that with her husband? Yeah, he said he knew that the child wasn't his. He yeah. mentioned that. But so I originally thought, because again, this was almost, I don't even know, maybe this was like the third or fourth mystery of the novel of where it was <laughs> yeah. done. And so I thought, I mean, again, I've seen enough co- yeah. I've seen enough adaptations of cozies. I've read enough cozies. I knew a girl was involved. I thought I was gonna come home and be like, look, I'm engaged. And you yeah. know, ring. I was expecting that. And I I was not expecting them to come back married because I don't really, I think, I still think it's three days in Massachusetts and blood tests and all that jazz. Oh. We've had enough time to call mom and say, hey, I'm doing something. Um, so there would have been enough time for that one. I was not expecting them to come back married and I was not expecting her to come back pregnant. I wasn't no. a girl though. I, I I think this, the other two, you know, things kind of were like, wait a second, this is new. <laughs> but yeah. But I thought it was really cute though, how sweet he was when it came to the new wife. I, I think her name was Mika. Um, he was really, really cute though, saying, you know, you, you could tell he loved her. And I thought it was really sweet saying, no, I want to be there for her. You know, the boyfriend left, her family abandoned her. And like, she's my friend, I'm going to be there. And then the more he talked about her, she was going, oh, he really does love her. Even though he didn't say it, I think yeah. it was really cute how he, how he talked about her. So I actually kind of came around to the storyline the more you saw them and kind of interacted with each other. I, it was one of those, I didn't really see it at first, but I'm going, okay, I'm there for this. So that's that's how I interpret it. It's a good thing she's a nurse too, with all these people breaking out of the hospital. Someone has to take care of them. I mean, I kind <laughs> of- Renee. Yes, I think so too. The daughter, def- daughter-in-law definitely did more baking than Jake. She offered to do the cakes, and I love how he's like, yeah, she's a nurse, and then she won baking competitions, and then wasn't she the violin player, or it was a violin, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Whatever, her own cozy mystery series, that woman. <laughs> she should be her own sleuther. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if in the next one she teams up with them investigating. I think, okay, KL's comment, she seems to obsess about something all the time, and then can't she just be happy he is home and safe? I was really curious about his history because it was alluded to, but we never really got yeah. the end of it. I, I mean, maybe that will come up in future books saying, you know, flashbacks or, you know, he's going to run into someone from his old life and we're going to find out, you know, what actually went down. But yeah, we find, I mean, I didn't even know he was an alcoholic or in remission until I want to say like a third of the way into the book, maybe. Mm-hmm. And I guess the sheriff had been crucial and I don't know if he, gave him lesser sentences or something like that. But it seemed like the sheriff had been kind of lenient on him because he understood what was where he was coming from and knew the family and stuff. Again, with like the sheriff relationship being like, yeah, I know you're not the killer. He's like, yeah, oh, I'm write you off. He wasn't even, he didn't even appear in the book enough really to do it. Well, you know, that might be a good way to be a murderer. Hardly ever be in the book. But I don't like those cozy mysteries either, where it's like somebody back in chapter two that they mention in one sentence, and then it turns out it's them. Well, I'd, I almost, I would almost rather have that one than like the killer be written into the story like 60, 70 percent. And you're like, you're telling me this character exists now after all these pages. Now you're telling me this. Oh, that's the worst one for me when you're going, okay, now I know what's going on. Thank you for all the red herrings that I didn't need. Yeah. Oh, Vani says that the daughter-in-law does have a bigger part in the next book. Yes. I think she should <laughs> have her own sleuthing series, have a spinoff from a spinoff. <laughs> mm. How would you do that be, being pregnant with a baby if she's already three months pregnant? I... Luther. Oh my god. I mean Aurora Tea Garden did it. So why can't the daughter-in-law? It's so funny you say that because I'm looking down. Kensington sent me a package and I filmed it on my phone and I was gonna like just do a rough edit and post it to my Instagram um as as like a vi- you know, the video, egg video, I don't know what they call it, egg TV. Um, and they sent a book and the characters 
pregnant and it says she doesn't want to have her baby in prison. Like that's in the background. And I'm looking down like, which book was it? So now I'm curious. I'm going to have to find that and hold it up for you because I was oh. confused too. Like, oh, she's pregnant and she's sleuthing. This is new. So I, yes, thank you. <laughs> that was the other thing, you know, they finally mentioned about this character about halfway through, they mentioned really quickly how she looked. Ooh, and that looks like a Christmassy one. Yes, this is the one. I, I love the I love it how they say before she and the baby are singing Christmas carols in prison. <laughs> so yes, this is a pregnant sleuther. Um Ginger Snapped to Death. And it's by Catherine Bruns. And she's actually um giving away a book next month. Um, I believe it's um her Italian mystery series. So and she's also Ooh. one of her cozy's authors. And this book is gonna be given away during 12 Days Cozy. So if you want a pregnant sleuth there, I got the book for you. And if you want to eat gingerbread cookies <laughs> while you read it. I was gonna say I tossed it away as soon as you mentioned the gingerbread. I'm obsessed with this book cover. I'm gonna try and angle this. Look how scared the gingerbread looks. <laughs> oh my gosh. And what does that note say? Ho ho ho, time for you to go. Woo. I was I saw the cover and I was just laughing hysterically because they drew the mouth like he's terrified. <laughs> yeah. I got the biggest pick out of that. That's awesome. I really like that. Yeah, I don't know. This um cozy mystery. Um, I actually thought was going to end a chapter before it did. <laughs> she had a really nice conclusion at the, I think it was the second to last chapter, reading the inscription or whatever, the stitching on her pillow. I'm like, oh, that's so touching. But then there was a whole other chapter to go. So I was listening to the audio. I have the paper version, but I was listening to the audio book um, on my, during my commute. I, I have to admit, I was kind of, I, I was funny. I'm like, wait a second, there's more pages here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, part of me appreciates the fact she's like, I don't want to have any loose ends. Like part mm. of me appreciates that. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Like it was almost as if she realized that she had not overlooked something, but oh, if the reader has questions about this, I'm going to answer that. So, I mean, I get it, but I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, Cause this reminded me of some of the other books where you're going, oh, I need more information. And she's like, I'm going to give you that information. Like, don't worry, I got you covered. Yeah. <laughs> One of those, it, again, like, I think it just depends on what you're looking for with this book, because there are some people who are like, no, end the story, like as soon as you can. And other people are going, no, pretty little bow with the epilogue. <laughs> Yeah, I think she, this author is the type of person that you would meet in person. And if you ask them what happened on a TV show episode, they would tell it to you like line by line by line. <laughs> I mean, I do think it's interesting. I'm going, so where, where's the list? So I was going to say, we might as well talk about it. So we had Marla, Miss <laughs> Halligan, and Sarah Bell. So we had four people who were in on this. Wait, did you say the brother to Clark? Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was, so we really had quite a few bad guys with this book. So, I mean, I was not expecting that with her writing. <laughs> yeah, and how could Clark kick his own mother out of her house? That was really messed up. I, did you, pre I mean, did anyone predict this scenario? It reminds me of, and then there were none with Agatha Christie. Where you're just, I just, I don't know. Where, you, where you're expecting something and you're like, wait a second, it's everybody. Uh, for some reason, I was not expecting there to be four bad guys. Mm -mm. I did predict the seller, though, because they had mentioned the wall separating the two and that it was an older building. And they mentioned that seller, I think, in the first chapter when she went in and the lights were off. I'm like, oh, we'll go down in the cellar. It probably leads over to... Miss Halligan's shop next door since it used to be one building. So I knew that was going to come into play, but not all the people and their relationships to each other. That's why I put the word family in the word search, because this book definitely had good and bad things about family in it. I was so... I thought. <laughs> So I'm right there with you. I made a mental note of the seller for the most ridiculous reason ever. And it was because I thought she was scared of going down there. And I was reminded yeah. of Simone, where Kevin doesn't want to go down there because he's scared. And so I, I, I had this Home Alone reference. And because I had that reference in my mind, like it just stayed with me as I was reading. But again, I was thinking, because she pointed out the door, she kind of alerted her if something's going on. So I mean, I didn't know what was going on with Miss Halligan. But 
we didn't know that she had children because she's Miss Halligan. Yeah. <laughs> Miss. Yeah. And, so, and then we also don't find out till the very end that Clark was in jail with Sarah Bell's husband, Matt, and she met Marla when, when she was visiting Clark. So you don't- In New Clark. Jersey too. Yeah, in we don't- totally know. different state. Yeah, it took a while for these puzzle pieces to come together. So if anyone actually figured this out, I would be very impressed with you because I didn't, again, I'm thinking Miss Hallie, but I didn't know it was going to be her and her children and the wife. <laughs> yeah, I guessed Miss Halligan as well, but I did not guess the others. I mean, because Marla, she's, who who hurt her? Did she, she she almost needed surgery and she was really like apparently they shaved part of her head and I, again with the dog being hurt i never put my suspicion on her after that point and so i mean clark yeah, we we figured out he was a bad guy when he was trying to run them off the road <laughs> and they found the car yeah. i thought he was like the muscle behind the operation maybe i, I didn't think he was part of the operation you know, i i just i was gone with this one i was wrong was it Clark that was trying to run them off the road or was it the guy in the trailer with the dog who was hired by Clark to run them oh, off the road? Um, Roscoe was the one who, um, he was supposed to alert people of, oh, they're coming in the back way with their oh, got it. items. He was the one who almost sent her into the, the water. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, they had a few near death experiences in this book. They were, they gotta be careful, these two. I guess Roscoe was kind of the red herring, like you were supposed to think it was him. I don't really know why else he would be included, unless it was just to have another dog in the story. I love the dogs, though. The poor little baby. <laughs> Someone said the uh, next one. I'm, I like, please tell me there's not another animal thing in the next one. That's so sad. You gotta protect the animals. Yeah, I don't know. How can you do this to me? Like, don't do that. Yeah, this, this, um, there was a lot going on in this book. Let's just leave it at that. Um, I don't think I will be reading book number two. I mean, I think, it, I think it's, again, it's just like a matter of what you're looking for. And like, if you like being told a story and again, you like that bow at the end, I think it's for certain readers and yeah, everybody read, like read what makes you happy, do your thing. I'm just curious at this town at this point, like I'm probably going to pick up the next book. Um, the only thing I was looking down and I was going to red flag because I thought this was hysterical. And if anyone had any thoughts on this was the fact they just walked into Marla's house and they were grabbing chocolate and they go through the, the house and they open the laptop and they press her computer. Her yeah. They open up the trash and they, and they got rid of the files. Like, no, we're going to take these out of the trash and make them real again. I was curious about people's thoughts on this one. Like, is this really good sleuth thing or is this just, you know, breaking and entering without the breaking? <laughs> Uh, and they go down in her cellar too, right? So there we yeah, have another go cellar. Her, and then they go back a second time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was just really curious if that was like, oh no, there's a sleuth thing. This is what sleuthers do. Or as soon as they open up the laptop and we're, you know, adding files back from the trash, I was kind of curious about that one. <laughs> I liked her comment um, in there about, well, who really ever deletes all the files in their trash or recycle bin? And I'm like, um, me? <laughs> I do it every day. <laughs> I permanently delete my things because I don't like things hanging out in there. But I mean, I, I probably do it like once a month. Really? I probably, oh. Yeah, I probably do it like every three weeks, three, four weeks, um, just because I get very preoccupied and I forget, you know, oh, yeah, there's stuff in there. I should just get rid of that now. Um, Maybe I'm just obsessive compulsive about it because I, I think I empty mine every few hours <laughs> at work. That's probably better, though, for your computer, because it's not taking up extra space, slowing down. Yeah, the it's that's it. Better. Yeah, that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's generally better for a computer. Like it doesn't take up extra space and everything else. But no, I just sort of forget after a certain point. And I'm that person who will download a file and like it will still be there X amount of weeks later. Like, oh yeah, that's still there. <laughs> <You might've laughs> I like Crystal. Yeah, it's perfectly normal to get chocolate from someone's house who's in the hospital. Totally normal. <laughs> Thank you. I was really curious. They were just like, yeah, we'll just go to her house. And they... They didn't just go to her house. They went to the shop, then the first house, and then then the second house. They went to three different locations. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, and then they decide to really like go looking for this office, and it was her hidden office. Do you picture this chocolate like a massive brick, like this, like wrapped in foil? I mean, I was really curious about this woman having two houses and everything else because I'm going, what is what? What kind of chocolate are you selling? Like, how many? And he was a teacher before, right? I'm like, I can only afford my one little house on my teacher's salary. I agree with you. Like, is it a like a brick? And then they're just, you know, I pictured like the lemon zester with the chocolate. Like, that's what I'm picturing when they're talking about this. I don't know. Yeah. If it's accurate. I can't picture this like my Great British Baking Show. I don't think I've ever seen them just be like, "Here is my chocolate." Boom. I was imagining like in you know, CSI, where they find a big brick of drugs. That's what the chocolate looked like, except when they opened it, it was chocolate. Oh, my, you know. She's just keeping money next to the chocolate in the same boxes. I mean, wasn't, did she, no, no one was going to notice that. And who's going to be their chocolate supplier now? I mean, if she had such unique chocolate and now she's in jail, well, that's going to be hard. Well, this was my favorite part with... <laughs> with Jacobia there and Jake, she took extra chocolate. And so she might be able to like reconfigure yeah. the recipe. Maybe she can be her own supplier now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or be like, this is limited, exclusive. Um, I don't know what Marla's place was called. Chocolate, you know, get it while you can. Limited <laughs> supply. I thought it was so funny because... She she goes, oh, just for a taste now and then. And the way she said it now and then, I'm going, you're just going to be hoarding chocolate there, aren't you? I mean, I would just eat I eat the chocolate. I mean, again, this is a whole bad when it's Halloween because chocolate's on sale. You just want to, like, buy it all at one time. That stuff exactly. doesn't happen here. Let's go mm -hmm. with it. <laughs> it's like when I make chocolate chip cookies, you know, one chocolate chip cookie dough ball for me, one for the tray, two for me one for the tray <laughs> and this is a woman who's eating half her shop she's not gonna wait to eat the chocolate i mean she was just like she was just lying to herself at that point <laughs> i think they did finish all i think it was who had a someone had a question about the cheesecakes did they finish them all it seemed like they finished them all in time for the fourth of july celebration didn't it I remember. Yeah, they finished all of them. Mm -hmm. I Again, that's why I wrote down the number 28, because they started off with 12, and yeah. so they doubled the order to 24, and then I think they said they wanted, I'm pretty sure they added four more after that. So I was keeping track of how they kept adding to this order, and I thought after a certain point it made sense to me of why Ellie was kept going along with it. Of, oh, yeah, we want to build up our business. I need the money. I want to send my daughter to school. I want to make sure my husband doesn't have to work as much. So, I mean, it all made sense. It all kind of, you know, like the stars aligned with my understanding. Yeah. Until then, I'm going, just say you're going to pick a cake. Like, stop with the cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was getting annoyed with them. Like, no, you. there are other things you can make. Like, you can, again, they're making the biscotti. They had the cookie. Like, they had all these other things in their shop. And I'm going, they did? Just just send them those. Just stop with the cheesecakes. Exactly. I don't know how they... Don't you have to refrigerate cheesecakes after you make them, too? Yeah. It seemed like it was a lot of work. I was... And even then, they could only make two at a time because of the oven size and the heating elements that they had. I mean, the, you got to give Ellie, you know, a gold star for just going above and beyond. Because, again, she was the one making those things. Yeah. And you have to wait till they cool down to put all the toppings on. That was a big deal. That was a lot. I hope that they got a lot of... Well, it seemed like the Coast Guard was really happy, which is good because they'll probably be rescuing them a lot in future books. So that's their payment. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I have to admit, I, I think that this is just me. I loved it. I loved the fact that Ellie was the one who got to do the interviews and was kind of the face of the business. I'm like, you deserve that. Like, yes. She you know did. Her. I was happy she with her. I yeah. Mean, that was my own little, I, I was kind of like, you go, Ellie. Like a little, like, oh, give her a little, you know, you go girl sort of thing. Getting to be the one featured for the interviews. Because the other one's out there and doing other stuff. And she's the one who's actually doing all the hard work for the, the store. So I was glad she was the interviewed one. Yeah, Jacobia is more like the person with the money who started the business. Even though I think they technically went half and half, if I remember correctly. But she's more like the business end of it. And Ellie's more like the creator, the baker. 
I just saw the chocolate was criminally good. Da! But a that is amazing. I love that comment. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. I am, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> that needs to be like the tagline of a series or a book or something. And if it's not, and you, that's amazing. Yeah, that should totally be on the back. We can take out the wrong information about the chocolate inspector and put that instead. We should all cross it out and write that comment. Yeah, th again, that's why I asked earlier. Renee, I'm right there with Renee. How, who, were they ever going to pay Marla for the chocolate? Because <laughs> that's a lot of chocolate. It and, is. I mean, Hershey's has good chocolate, too. Just saying. Oh I God. think Jacobia's um, husband must make a lot of money as his, you know, fishing boat operation. And it sounds like from the previous book, I think she said in here that her home is 200 years old and renovations mm -hmm. are expensive, right? So hey, two, chimneys. two chimneys. She said both of them are going and I'm going, you have two chimneys. Why do you, I, for some reason that stuck out to me. I was like, that must be a really big house. To have, I, for, I don't know. That one just Yeah. Out. And old houses typically have big kitchens, right? Like big mm -hmm. fireplaces, like walk-in mm -hmm. fireplaces where they used to cook. So small town honor system. Yeah, you're right. That may be it. Or it may be like some kind of barter, you know? I have to admit, I think that maybe he does have money because he, I don't want to, maybe frugal because he does all the work on his own car and stuff. So he That's might true. have some money in the bank because he's finding other ways around it. I, I believe that. He might have some extra money to give her. And he's always out at sea. And when he comes back, he's just taking naps and taking showers with his wife. And then he's back out at sea. Yeah. He's, I, love, I love the note he writes to her. Be careful. Because he knows he's, she's going to go sleuthing. He's like, I'm not going to stop you, but just, you know, take care of yourself. And then she almost gets run off the road. She yeah. didn't even give advice. His, his two-word note to her. <laughs> oh, that relationship. I need oh. to know how they met. I need I need more information. I got to go, yeah. go read the original series. <laughs> yeah. It would be interesting to see um, how she ended up there and how her dad ended up there. I mean, she did mention how she was how she was divorced and right. she left uh, when the when he was twelve, I believe she said, or mm -hmm. she had been arguing for twelve years. I remember there was a twelve years. I don't remember if Sam was twelve years, but um, twelve years old at the time. So I mean, we got like a little bit, but I loved it when she said that Ellie stood up for her, and that was when she knew she was her hero. So I thought that was cute. Yeah, that was, that was sweet. That. I'd love to see like more of their relationship because. We get them when they're already best friends for life. And, you know, again, with the whole, I thought it was really sweet how Ellie was saying to her, you're not going to believe me. And she's going, Ellie, if you tell me, I'm going to believe you. Like that, yeah. really, that was so sweet to me. That just really struck me. And so we get to see the benefits of their friendship, but we don't really see how it blossoms. So I think mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see the beginnings of those two because we got to see them, you know, arm in arm. And I just, I mean, again, just what you're looking for. And I love that scene for some reason, you know, which is going, if you, I don't care how crazy it is. If you tell me, I'm going to believe you. But I think it would be cute to see how she forms that bond with someone as an adult, because I don't know about you guys, but like making friends as an adult is weird. You're like, yeah, hi, you know, I see you every day. I don't really know. Are we friends? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not like when you were a little kid and you're instant best friends just because yeah. you're playing on the playground at the same time. <laughs> Like, oh, acquaintance, you're like, wait, but I talk to you every day. How does this work? I just, yeah. So I just thought it was really cute that she found this best friend as an adult and they formed that connection. So I thought it was nice to see the connection, but it would still be nice to be like, yeah, how did this grow? Give me advice here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I definitely agree. I like how the dog growled, like, I'm your friend, <laughs> right on cue. That's <laughs> right. I don't know if you guys heard that. It was like right on cue as I was talking about making friends. He's like, I'm down here. <laughs> Oh, don't like, forget about me. As if you can never forget about the fur baby. <laughs> pounds of him. He's oh. adorable. I love when you have those pictures of him surrounded by books or like right in front of your bookshelves. 
and it, it's he's so tiny but i mean it's he's just he's my little man i uh, he has his own instagram and twitter he's the bookish puppy and like, oh, I i'll him. have to follow him <laughs> well, we look at him surrounded by books because he it's so funny like he almost knows where my attention is gonna go like if i'm looking at the bookcase he'll go over there like i'm with the books hi like don't forget about me i know you're looking at the book but here i am so he, he kind of he knows to go where like the books are it's really cute <laughs> You should let him vote on the next poll by laying the four books out on the floor and whichever one he sniffs first, that's his vote. We'll let Max vote in the poll. Well, he's the he's dressed as Sherlock for celebrating Cozy, the other Twitter account for um, Cozy Mysteries that I have. He's dressed, he's dressed as Sherlock. He, he's the little logo because for our club, we have Perlock, who's a cat. So for right. some reason, I was like, we need a cat and a dog. So we have one for each, pe like, each group of people. <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. He's a I can't help myself. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, you mentioned the poll. You just reminded me. So this is our next book. And some people said they already read it and loved it. Um, it's amazing. I already read it and loved it. I actually started reading it for a second time. Um, but then yesterday I got book two on audio. So I'm going to read book two while you guys read book one. But it, oh, uh -huh. it's one of my favorite books of all times. Look at you, fancy. I was going to say, I just learned to do this. I was so excited. Uh, we had this issue beforehand. My like. I don't know what it was with my internet. It decided it wanted to conk out literally 10 minutes before the live stream. And I was so excited before then because I had been learning to do this. I'm going, oh, this is so cool. I can do better. And even then I can do like a little ticker tape now where it goes across the bottom. I was Ooh. Like, oh, nice. Fancy. <laughs> I, I know, right? We get, I can have some fun with this next time. Come up with some questions beforehand. Feel like a newscaster or something. But exactly. Yeah. Oh, Alexa says, can we talk about the cover of the book? This one? Yeah. Let's see if I can do this, angle it properly. It's super cute. I love how they have the balloons. I love the books. You got the cat. Everything about this is just perfect for October. I just love it. Everything about that book is just perfect. It makes my librarian heart happy. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, she has amazing taste in books, people. So if she says it's amazing, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it is. It's one of my all-time favorites. Oh, my goodness. That is high praise. Yeah. I'm like, this just shot up to, like, the next to be read book. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love how you got me looking at the cover, too, where I'm like, oh, the cookies. Even then, let's see how close I can get without the shine. You get the whole gloss versus matte issue with books. And yeah. so when it's easier to take a picture of a matte cover, but glossy covers just look prettier for some reason. They are I love the cookie design. It's the little, you get little pumpkins, then you get the little skeleton head. The I library mean, cat. I'm a cat pumpkin. person. Little so pumpkin. any book with a cat sucks me in. What's the cat's name in the book? Or do you remember? Oh, I don't remember, which is sad because I was just listening to it again today. That happens though sometimes I feel like I I'm curious what the cat's name is now. It's <laughs> cute. It's like more than one word I want to say. Mr. something something. I was looking at the back like maybe it was on the back of the cover but it's not. Someone named yeah. Al. Her name is Carrie. So we're yeah. gonna have to find out what the cat's name is. <laughs> That's a mystery. Even, it's so good and even book number two starts off like action right away. It's awesome. It's a, a, it's a definite get right to the point book. Okay, so this one is definitely like the fast pace one that you like. Yeah. yeah. And it's got a lot of good mysteries behind it. It's got a ghost. It's got a library. And it's got cats. Those are my favorite things. I think you just, like, the, you just put this into the perfection category. <laughs> we got cookies and on the cover, books, we got animals. I love it. Yeah. And yeah. she does have an Instagram. I tagged her a couple. I tagged her when I was posting. Do you want to yeah. it's, it's wheel and wool or? Yes. Yes. I do a lot of knitting and crochet. So, um, yeah. And now I'm doing sewing. I really, I saw your masks. I would love to sew bags out of that fabric. I wonder if I could just buy the fabric. Maybe. I, I mean, I, I, um. 
You should put it on spoon flour. They um, let people that design their own things okay. put it on fabric. And then I could make bags to carry the books in. It's called spoon flour? Is that what it's, you said? Yeah. Okay. Again, I don't know how it works, but. No, I mean, again, I very much like if people want certain things or use certain platforms, tell me because, again, this isn't me trying to build a business. This is me trying to offer things for club members because I like, you know, I like it when you feel as if, oh, I have this. I'm a part of something, you know. Oh, I have my shirt or, you know, I even bought myself this. I was so excited. It just came in the mail, my own little pencil bag. So now when I work on my dissertation, I can put my post-it notes in here. I was so excited when I saw this. So, again, That's it's just horrible smile. So again, if this if you like certain websites, because right now it's on we have um, Teespring, Zazzle, and Society Six. And so oh. Society Six has a lot of great sales, same with Zazzle, which is why I like those accounts. So I might I always try and keep you guys updated when there's a sale. Especially Zazzle. They'll have some really good ones when it's like, oh, 25% off all of this, or Society Six had like a 30% off sale a week ago. So I'll try and keep you appraised if there are any more sales. That's off. super. I just realized I haven't even taken a drink out of my awesome old logo <laughs> mug. Oh yay, for luck. Oh, another knitter. Yeah, see, I know how to knit blankets and scarves. Ooh. I'm a basic knitter. I That's mean good. Squares and rectangles are important. I know, but you're doing these patterns that are amazing. She's inspiring. Maybe I'm we'll addicted. Oh my gosh. And since COVID, I actually knitted so much that I hurt my shoulder. <laughs> Is that oh, embarrassing? Wow. Yeah. Too much knitting. I um, have hurt my shoulder. So that's why I took up sewing because then I can sew and then, um, you know, I can knit, but I can't knit for like eight hours a day. So. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry you hurt yourself though. I'm glad yeah. you found an alternative. Yeah, I did. Aww. And I mean, I'm better, so it's good. Uh, no, I feel, I feel your pain. I've been, you know, morning to night, I've been doing the dissertation and I started to have problems with my hands where like it physically hurt to type. I oh could feel gosh. the tension. So like, as soon as you said that, like, I know how painful it is and how, like, when you're like, this is what I do and I can't do it. So I'm sorry you went through that. I know it's no fun. Yeah. yeah I, I have a constant uh, callus on my fingers from knitting and crochet, but it's all good. So, but yeah, I could totally, if I had fabric, I could make bags for you then to give away. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be amazing. That would be so cool. I mean, as soon as you said spin flower, I wrote it down. I'm like, I will look into this. This is going to yeah. happen. <laughs> well, Crystal said she's a knitwear designer. I'm just noticing oh. now how your name is Crystal T Knits. How did I not notice that right away? I see. You guys are meant to meet. The Cozy Companions Unite. Or Cozy Crew. That's the other one we got. <laughs> that's right. I'm sure we have so many awesome talents out there. I tried to learn to crochet. I was not very good at it. I give you guys credit. I was not, for some reason, I think maybe I was just too preoccupied. I'm trying to be better about learning to relax. This is why I, I start, I have another knitting project over there. I could even pick it up and show you. It's got this really kind of pretty green color to it um, because I'm trying to learn to not always feel as if I have to be busy doing stuff on the computer or busy with the dissertation. So if I'm knitting, my hands can't be typing. <laughs> I think we should probably, just like this book had a spinoff, we could do Cozy Mystery Crafter Noon Club, just like in those mystery books by Jen McKinley. If you've read The Library Lovers, they have a Crafter Noon Club on, I think it's the last Thursday of the month or something like that. That would be cool. You just reminded me, um, The Lizzie Bennett Diaries it was a YouTube, I don't know if people remember this, a YouTube series, and one of the actresses, um, I follow her, and I can't remember her name, but she played Lydia, and she does craft versations, where she uh, stars, but as they, they, as they talk and do the interview, they're crafting the entire time, and so it's teaching them how to do little crafts. You just reminded me of that, craft versations, because I thought that was so cute, and I'm going to go I'm going to grab the knitting because I figure I'm like, it's right there. I'll yeah, like, show it off. off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. As, uh, is it a tash of magic and pages? Once you learn to knit socks, they're really addicting. 
it's very satisfying. And then you can wear like crazy funky color socks and people will notice them and you'll be like, well, yes, thank you. I made them myself. <laughs> Look at that. Pretty. It's going to be like very small blanky. <laughs> awesome i don't know why i went with this color but yeah so it's pretty um, it reminds me of mint ice cream yes but no you reminded me because you mentioned giveaway i just don't want to forget to mention um so make sure if you have any <laughs> any other final thoughts about the book or tonight um because all the comments are going to be entered into um i always go through after the video renders and take every single comment and it becomes an entry and you can win two paperback books. I wrote them down because I didn't want to forget the titles. So Back to School Murder by Leslie. I always feel like I'm going to mispronounce his name. Meir, M-E-I-E-R. How do you say her last name? Who, me? Yeah, Meir. Oh. I don't know how to say it. I would say Meyer. Meyer, OK. So then we have All Trust Up by Pamela Martin. And so Cozy Crate Box is going to be sending two paperback copies to one of the commenters tonight. So if you have any final comments, please do so now <laughs> because yeah. I'm so excited about these books because they're both autumn themed. So they're perfect for fall. So if you want some fall reads, now is the time to do that. So yeah, I won back in March and I actually haven't taken a picture of it yet, but um, I got my books last week. It was like, I almost forgot I won because it took a long time. Yeah, was but I got them. Mm -hmm. Kitty yeah. book, cat books. Okay, I was gonna say it's it's hard for me to tell sometimes because you know I work with other people when I do the giveaways and so you know I don't know if they actually follow up sometimes. I'm glad they got yeah. to you. I did. It was so exciting. But I know Cozy Crate. She messaged me the other day, ready to send out the giveaway. I'm like, oh no no, I'm gonna do it. That's tonight. So she's like, whoever's gonna win these books, you're gonna get them asap because Cozy oh, Crate is on the name. So that's awesome. I know that from, I know that one's going out ASAP. So yeah, my goal is to have bookshelves like you. I'm like <laughs> my nightstand is about two and a half feet tall of cozies against the wall right now, plus a bunch stacked on the other side. So I'm getting there. And then I'm trying to remember if I had any other things I wanted to mention. Um, if you are a cozy creator or you know of any cozy authors who might want to take part in 12 Days of Cozies, um, tell them that they can. There's a Google interest form. I'll reshare it. But if they would like to participate, they can. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, you can sign up to, um, I was going to say, I'll share this link again because I created a specific, it's called a landing page. And if you sign up via that link, you get three uh, Cozy Mystery Bingo Boards. And I was really happy and proud of how they came out. So if you haven't signed up, I'll reshare that link over on our Twitter. And you can do so there and get the three boards because I really love how they came out. And I think you'll have fun with them. So I just want to make sure I mention that. And I think those are all the announcements. If anyone else has any questions or you have something you want to mention. <laughs> I just want to say I love all your graphics and your quotes that you put with oh, everything. You. And the whole newsletter at the bottom just makes me oh. terribly happy. I've been having the best time with this. You know, I, um, I, I, again, I'm one of those people where like, I'm just so honored if someone like clicks this button, I'm like, I'm going to do everything I can for you. Like, thank you for signing up. Thank you for doing this. Like I, I was like, I'm going to put together memes. I'm going to put together images. Um, also for 12 days of cozies, again, I've been preparing for this since probably July. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, so every morning for 12 days of cozies, you're going to get an email in your inbox and, um, some, I, I'm pretty sure right now there's 16, Cozy Mystery authors who are going to be writing blog posts that are going to be in the newsletter. Wow. There's also going to be extra bingo boards. There's going to be Instagram story challenges, all sorts of images for every single morning. So all the goodness, all the content. <laughs> it's going to be super. You have the best ideas. I copied you last year at school <laughs> and I did a, <laughs> I did a 12 days of book miss. Um, oh, and I gave away, yeah, I gave away different things each day to the students in my school. Oh, so you are an inspiration. Oh my God, you made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. You're so sweet. Oh. <laughs> yep. I'll just keep doing the word searches. I like making them. <laughs> I know. I have to, I have to admit, like, you are brilliant with those. I, I created, um, if you guys haven't seen it, I'm going to have to share this one as well. I made um, an Instagram story highlight. So they're on Instagram. I, sh I put them on the Quiz Mystery 
It's called thecozymysterybookclub.com, like on our website. So I'm going to have to add that one as well and update the page because this little lady is very talented and I love how you guys love the word searches. So I'm going to have to go post that one too. <laughs> they're fun. They're fun. Make sure you do the one for this book once it's posted. I feel like I put a little more spoilers in this month's word search than I have in past ones. So, but it's good. I was going to say, I, I, I think, I'm not sure if it went live or not with that tweet, because again, my internet decided it wanted to go wonky about two oh, yeah. before our live stream. So I will make sure that's live by at least, you know, as soon as, as soon as we sign off, I'll make sure it's there because you guys, it's, it's fun. And I want to make sure you have it. So, awesome. and then I'll add it everywhere else. Thank you for all the love in the chat. We've got all kinds of Angela, Angela love going on. Angela squared. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so sweet. I'm so happy you guys are excited for it. I'm working really, really hard. And so I'm, I'm really hoping that it's going to be a lot of fun for y'all. I'm so excited. We have, we have so many great authors and, you know, I'm slowly revealing, you know, the names as we go. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to have like the best time because all the giveaways, um, there's going to be something for literally everybody, no matter the platform. So if you're not on one, you can still do something. So I found out with MailChimp, it sounds sort of creepy at first, but like, it's not that bad when you think about it. Um, it, it you can find out who opens the email. So like you can get a list of people who opened it. And so, and I, I, again, I say creepy, I was like, it's big brother. No, but like you can see who opened it, just the emails. And so um, if you, what I'm gonna do for that is you can win an audiobook. So again, digital. So if I see your email, you can win an audiobook. On Twitter, you can win the physical copy of a book. And then on Instagram, you can win an ebook. So literally every day, there's gonna be three different ways to win with different content. So. There's something for everybody. So, like, no matter if you're a paperback reader, if you want to win an ebook, or you're an audio listener, you have chances. So, 12 Days of Cozies is gonna be awesome. I promise. That's good odds too. <laughs> Very good odds. Well, we have more people in this book club than ever before. So, again, I'm also not gonna say you can only win one thing. You can win twice. It might Ooh. just be your death. <laughs> there you go. Of course, we're gonna have to like do a. I mean, these authors are so generous. So I'm, I'm organizing like what goes where and I'm trying to like move all the puzzle pieces, but you guys are definitely hopefully gonna like, hopefully if you if you are entering or you're opening content, you have a very good chance of winning. <laughs> the more cozy is the better. So all the coziness is coming your way. Very true. I agree. Cheers <laughs> to that. Yay. Oh my gosh, you guys are so sweet. You know, I was going to say, I'm starting to lose my voice because, again, I'm not really, I'm an introvert. I spend the day with the dog and I spend my day typing and doing research. So this is like, why are you talking so much? My vocal cords are so confused right now. <laughs> but you guys are so sweet for joining us and commenting. Oh, my goodness. Do you have any final thoughts about the book or anything else? Or you guys have comments? Because, again, if you comment, you're entered to win. So get the comments in now. I think I'm good. I'm going to be reading book two of Death Overdue and uh, really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to next month. Haha, we got this. <laughs> my little my little bottom thing. I love this. It's like the little bottom banner. That's what it's called. I, it. say, I can hold it on. Oh, it's backwards. I have to say, I can hold it on this end. Oh, I can't get my hands right. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, so this is our book for next month, and I believe he's in the comments, or at least he was earlier. Ben is going to be joining me. He's so sweet. So we're going to be talking about this book, and hopefully all the Halloween coziness is going to be, you know, ready to go. Oh, and yeah. tell me next thing, Crystal, I just Trigger. saw the movie. <laughs> oh, I, oh, thank you. Oh, give it a thumbs up. You guys are so sweet. I appreciate that. Oh, you guys are awesome. So thank you so much for watching. And thank you. I feel so honored that you spent the night chatting with me. Again, I, it's oh. one of those, I've seen your name so frequently. And so and you're so sweet with all your comments. Just actually talking to, you know, live is, uh, it's, it's the first time. I'm, it's just, it was amazing. I feel like I've known you my whole life. Oh, you're, this woman like makes me smile. And she, she shows up wearing the shirt. She's ready to go. She's talking about this book. I mean, I, I adore you. It's... <laughs> Thank you. Don't learn how to crochet. So, yeah. <laughs> she's an inspiration. I can help. <laughs> Aw, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy our next book. You enjoy the chat. And if you, you know, want to chat, you know, talk cozy throughout the month, there's the Instagram and Twitter and, you know, all sorts of other options that we're going to be talking about. So <laughs> please stay tuned with that and happy reading and sleuthing. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.